Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to test vertical jump and what's a good number for your vertical jump. I've done a ton of research for this video and I've done a ton of vertical jump testing on athletes as a high school strength conditioning coach, as a strength conditioning intern at The Ohio State University with Olympic sports, and even on some professional athletes. So in this video, we're gonna break down the test norms. We're gonna talk about how you can actually test your vertical jump at home, whether you have equipment or not. We're gonna talk about some tips for performing the best vertical jump to make sure you get your best score and your score is reliable. We'll talk about the science of the vertical jump, and then we'll show you some elite performances in the vertical jump and discuss that. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so let's start off by talking about how we test our vertical jump. And there's a big difference between a counter movement vertical jump and a running vertical jump. The typical vertical jump test is just a counter movement vertical jump test in one place. And that's typically done if we have equipment with either a Vertec or a timing plate. The Vertec you may have seen before, this is a video of my wife doing a vertical jump test when we were testing some softball high school athletes. But basically with this test, you throw your arms down, you throw your arms up, and you touch the highest ring you can. And you have to set the bottom of the sticks as high as you can reach to accurately use this Vertec device. The other common way that's very reliable and valid to test vertical jump if you have equipment is a timing plate where you stand on the timing plate and you may have seen videos of this. The athlete jumps up, they have a certain amount of time in the air, they land, and then that time in the air is turned into a vertical jump number. And again, this is pretty accurate if you have the equipment. However, if we don't have equipment, that's all right. We can still do a vertical jump test at home. We would just need a piece of chalk or a piece of tape and a wall. And for testing this way, what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach and actually reach as high as you can and touch the wall with either the chalk or the tape. And then you'll jump and then mark the chalk or the tape as high as you can jump. And then the difference between where you can reach to and where you can jump to is your vertical jump. So those are all ways to assess the counter movement jump or the standard vertical jump and get your number. And your number might be 10 inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, 24 inches. But once you have that number, you can only really compare that to other counter movement or standard vertical jumps. A completely different test would be a running vertical jump test. And this isn't a standard vertical jump test. You can actually expect a significantly higher result for this test, maybe six to up to 12 inches higher on a running vertical jump test because we can transfer some of the forward momentum of running into vertical jump. So this is gonna be different than the counter movement jump, but if you want, you can test yourself in a standard counter movement jump and a running vertical jump to get two different scores. And we'll talk about both of those values and how you can know if your counter movement jump is good or if your running vertical jump is a good score. There are three important things that I want you to know whenever you are doing this jump to make sure you get the best performance on your vertical jump test. Number one is that you don't wanna do static stretching right before your vertical jump test. Static stretching right before a vertical jump can actually cause a temporary reduction in your vertical jump performance, so you wanna make sure you don't do that. Secondly, we wanna make sure that this is not within 72 hours of a high volume eccentric focused leg day, or really a heavy leg day in general. After a hard leg day, especially if we're hitting high volume eccentrics, we can have reduced vertical jump for up to and even beyond 72 hours. So even if you feel fresh two days after a leg day, you may still have a reduction in your vertical jump at that time. And then third, we wanna make sure we're jumping with good technique, which includes a very fast counter movement. So for optimal form, we wanna actually throw our hands down very quickly and then make sure we're exploding out of the hole. We don't wanna have really high joint excursions, meaning we don't wanna bend the knees really deep. We wanna keep this to about a half or a quarter squat position and then explode up from there. So we wanna throw our hands down very quickly into a partial squat, but not to a ton of depth where we're losing tension. And the science behind this is that the faster that we can stretch the muscles on the way down in our vertical jump, the more energy that we can store in our tendons and in our series elastic components within our muscle, which means that we can actually produce more force on the way up and then jump higher. So again, a higher stretch rate on the way down or the dip in our vertical jump is gonna increase the force potential and the potential to jump higher on the way up. Or if you just wanna make it look like you have a high vertical jump, you can just react to your own vertical jump videos from a really low angle and make it look like your head's above the rim. All right, so now let's look at elite athlete vertical jumps and then we can get into what we can expect from an average college athlete. All right, so one of the highest recorded vertical jumps in the NBA was from Zion Williamson, and he's a freak athlete and can jump crazy high. And what you might have seen a video of is him doing a running vertical jump test and getting 45 inches on this test. And this was actually a record for Duke whenever he was in college. And 45 inches is incredibly impressive. However, that's not the same as a typical counter movement jump. I could not find a video of Zion or LeBron doing a standard vertical jump, but from some different research, we can actually infer the difference between his running vertical jump and probably what we would expect from a typical counter movement jump. 
From the research, we see about a 10 inch difference from college basketball players doing a counter movement jump in place versus doing a running jump off their dominant leg. So if Zion is doing a 45 inch jump off of his dominant leg, then we can expect probably around a 35 inch vertical jump off of two legs with a typical counter movement protocol. Either way, that's still incredibly impressive. 35 inches is a great vertical jump, and now we can compare that to Ronaldo. Ronaldo, we actually have some data on both a counter movement jump and a running vertical jump, and for Ronaldo, his typical counter movement jump is around 30 inches, whereas his running vertical jump is around 43 inches. And that 13 inch difference between the two is actually pretty interesting because we can actually see that this more sports specific movement for him is actually going to be running and doing a header and he's rarely jumping from a static position. So it's not that surprising to me that there's such a difference between running vertical jump versus a typical counter movement jump in his case. And then some other notable athletes, LeBron James probably has around a 40 to a 44 inch running vertical jump. And by comparison, Michael Jordan is thought to have had around a 48 inch running vertical jump. So you guys can debate in the comments who's the better athlete there. All right, so if you checked your standard counter movement vertical jump and you wanna compare to a more realistic college athlete, that's what we're gonna talk about now. So for a typical college athlete across many sports, the range of vertical jumps ranges around 15 to 22 inches. For an average D1 soccer player, we would see around 24 inches as an average vertical jump. For the average female college athlete, we see a range of around 10 to 16 inches. And for the average D1 female college volleyball player, we see an average of around 20.8 inches. So if you go test your counter movement jump height from a standard two leg vertical jump test, you can compare to these numbers and let me know in the comments what your vertical jump is and how it compares. If you have a friend with an impressive vertical jump, go ahead and drop that in the comments too because a lot of non-elite athletes have really impressive vertical jumps. If you guys want me to make a video breaking down the science of how to actually improve your vertical jump with training, go ahead and drop a comment below and make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.